So we left the freeze dryer running. You might be able to hear it in the background uh, because there wasn't very much moisture in it, uh, very much ice, uh, so a water load in it. So we're going to add another batch right behind it without defrosting it. That'll save a few hours. And in this case, it would save overnight because of the time of day. So we're going to get another batch in there. And so I'm planning on, we have some cooked chicken pieces in there. So hopefully we can get them all on the trays. Uh, probably can't be any deeper than some of those ham pieces were. So I've got this whole section that is pieces. So I think we'll take out some of them, load them onto the trays. And then if we need more, come and get more because got uh, one, two, three, four, five bags it looks like. This one looks like pieces and bits. So take out a little corrugated plastic piece to put stuff on to keep it chilled and get out a few bags of this to get started. And we've got three more bags in there so we'll get started on the first trays find out how far that goes and then move on to more if we need it this is where we'll get them we'll get the chicken pieces loaded onto the trays we've got the first tray tray one and these are cold and i'm going to have to break things apart probably so we'll get the gloves on is this costco rotisserie chicken yep. okay so this is Costco rotisserie chicken again, and this is like nice little slabs, uh, slices. Most of what I've done so far has been uh, just shredded pieces because I've been too lazy to do this. Uh, apparently my sister's not too lazy to make slices. Rotisserie chicken is such a fabulous deal. You get about two pounds of chicken meat up to about two and a half pounds so about two dollars a pound for the the chicken meat we think it's a really good deal half pound each package they're going to end up being kind of mixed onto the tray so uh, unless we look at the video we might not know where how much was in each one and some of these might be a little bit difficult and tall <laughs> well Kind of like the last ham ones, after it freeze dries part way and way before the last hour, we should take it out and rearrange some of this to help take care of that. Because uh, some of it's pretty stuck, but I can try on a couple of these pieces, see if we can kind of pop them apart. Oh, that actually was just fine. Oh yeah, that, that wasn't too bad. But it would be a bit time consuming, so I'm not going to do too many of them. And of course, it doesn't have to be on the scale. Well, it doesn't have to be weighed at all. If you don't want to weigh it, it's not needed. I weigh it because I like to track way too much information. For things like this, again, it doesn't really matter. You don't need the weight for something like this. It'll just absorb the amount of water it needs later. So tray one is $16.95. And I'm going to go ahead and just put a thermometer between a couple of the pieces here. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll give me some information about whether or not that area is warm if I go to take it out after the machine has stopped. And tray two. So I won't bore you with all the details. We'll get these loaded. And then once they're all loaded and weighed, we'll get them uh, thermometers in and get them ready to go into the freeze dryer. We'll get them moved over. So we'll be back in a few minutes with them on the trays. I've got the Costco rotisserie chicken pieces over here at the freeze dryer now. I only have thermometer in two trays because I didn't want to go get the drill. Uh, I have the drill bit down here, but I don't have the drill here. Uh, so this is some sliced pressed ham. So I got the thermometer in that one and then just kind of between there. That'll still be enough to tell me are the trays warm enough to take out safely without condensation. And that's the main reason I like to use the thermometers. It does give me some heads up about things, how close it is to finishing and everything. But the main use is actually, is it um, too cold? So is it going to have condensation? Okay, so we'll get those in the freeze dryer as soon as I finish getting the weights on the trays because I forgot. Okay, so this is tray one. And I have a weight on tray one and two. 
but we may have moved things around, so I better double check them. And it is a 1702 now. And tray two, 1894. Tray three, we've got 1655. And finally, tray four, 1721. Okay, now we can get them in the freeze dryer. So that's a big reason, what you saw there, why I do the same thing the same way every time, because otherwise I get lost on where I'm at and, and sidetracked, and I'm easily slide, sidetracked by shiny objects and squirrels. Uh, now we can get them in the freeze dryer, now that we've got them on there and the weights, before they thaw anymore. Okay, starting at the top, we've got tray one, and that's still at 20 degrees. And tray two, and that's really tall. And tray three, even more taller. And tray four, once again, ridiculously tall. So this batch is low moisture. This batch is low, low moisture, but it's still going to take a while because the food is really, really thick. But we got the other one done in basically one day. So it's the same day or the next day after we started the previous batch. So that helps us out time-wise. This one will be done probably almost definitely in two days because it's late enough today. So it won't be done tomorrow. Uh, this one won't be done in less than 24 hours. So this one will go on to the next day. Got a good ring all the way around the seal already. So we don't have to worry about air coming in and out for that seal because this air is way warmer than in there. It's close to 70 degrees out there. We want it negative 40 in there. So we've got a 110 degree temperature swing and we want to keep the hot air out here and the cold in there. So as soon as that's, oh, we've got one more thing to do. As soon as it's ready, well, it'll start itself. But we need to start and stop the machine. Because if you remember, on the last batch, we didn't stop it because it was a low water batch and was going to put this one in. Now we need to start and stop it right away. So this still shows the time and everything from the previous batch because we didn't stop it. Now we're going to stop it with no defrost and then immediately restart it using customize, start custom, and continue. All right, so it's showing six hours of freeze time remaining, and it probably doesn't need that much time because the thermometer at the bottom of the barrel that I have inside already shows that it's negative 36. And this is showing zero degrees at the bottom, well, at the sensor under the tray, the second tray up. Uh, the thermometers in the food show, uh, we only have two thermometers this time in there. One shows about 15 degrees and one shows about five degrees. So we won't need the full six hours of freeze time because it's already been freezing from the previous batch. So the barrel itself is already pretty much ready to freeze dry. The food in there is cold, but it's not as cold as it should be. I want to get it way below zero. Uh, but we don't need six full hours. So I'm going to go ahead and bypass two hours and just give it four. And probably three would be plenty. But I'll give it four, make sure it's got a chance to get good and solid again. Okay, other than that, We'll see you in just a minute, two days from now. Don't go away. The chicken and little bit of ham that's in there in this batch uh, has been in final dry for four hours and I've got it set for an 11 hour final dry so it has seven hours more to go. And it's late, late at night. Well, well, technically it's early, early in the morning and I'm not going to be up at the time that it's going to end. So I am going to add more time, but since I thought, well, I'm here and when we put the pieces on the tray, they were really thick and I couldn't break them apart and I couldn't push them down because they had been put in Ziplocs uh, for storage while they were waiting. 
Um, these are some of my sister's things, so I didn't do that. Anyway, I'm going to bypass all that time, take them out and kind of push them down a little bit on the trays and then put them back in. So it has seven hours showing, uh, seven hours, six minutes. I'll put it back in and give it um, 10 hours because that should be, or 10, 10 and yeah, about 10 hours. That should allow me to be down here to take them out, weigh them, and then put them back in at that time without having the machine stop in between. So I'm going to go ahead and bypass all the rest of that time and get them out to kind of stir them around. Okay, so it's showing just under seven hours, six minutes. Uh, everything's going well with it. I'm going to go ahead and pass, bypass the, all of that. Open the drain valve. So as soon as the pressure gets in, it'll equalize and I'll be able to open it up. I shouldn't assume, but I, I did assume that everybody knows that the vacuum pump is pulling out almost all the air out of here. So if you took the surface area of this, um, pi r squared, it's being pushed in at about 15 pounds per square inch. The math works out to over 1,700 pounds of, of pressure pressing against this door. This is one of the reasons it has to be so thick. But it's also why once it's under vacuum, even if you open this uh, handle, you can't pull it open. Now, let's get these out. And um, I guess I might as well rotate the positions too right now. That will kind of even out the drying time, I guess. Because I usually don't take them out until later. So, okay, this one. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and put this into place. This cold in between. And that's not surprising. Oh, and this one probably is, that's still stuck together, so it's icy in between there. But this one is relatively thin and loose in comparison to the other one. Anyway, so the areas in between are still cold. Uh, barely cool, but that one's still frozen together. So most of this is actually coming along well. Okay, I'm going to... I'll put that one back in. I'm going to leave it at the same spot though. Okay, this is one of the ones I was more interested in because they were these big blocks in um, the zip blocks. Yeah, and that's cold. There's icy spots in that. Yeah, and in fact that's still too solid to even break apart. Okay, so that's still stuck together, so it's still too frozen to pull apart. And that has a frozen spot right in the center. But it's mostly dry already. So I guess this didn't help any. Now, these are the ones that I couldn't get apart before, and it's still, there's a definitely cold spot. It's frozen from about here to here, so there's a frozen spot in the middle of there still. Ow! Well, that didn't work out. I'm doing more damage than good by trying to pull those apart, so forget that. I'm going to just put that back in there. I'm going to say that that really wasn't worth the effort to even try that. So I learned something though with at least chicken, if it's frozen and stuck together when you put it in there, you're just going to have to wait until it's pretty much done before you're going to get that stuff apart. Because uh, there's frozen spots in between that's still holding it together. Anyway, I'll reset the time and give it... Um, it gets about 10 hours and 
we'll be back tomorrow morning or later this morning I guess we could call that uh, so don't go away we'll be right back so gonna reset that gonna close the drain valve so more dry time I did close the drain valve continue I'm not worried about that and then all right it's restarted it'll be time to take it out to do the weight check tomorrow morning around 10 30 uh, so don't go away we'll be right back and I'm back so it's the next morning uh, the freeze dryer ran a little over 10 hours overnight uh, uh, all in final dry mode so it should be very dry now it finished or it stopped just a few minutes ago so the temperature on the trays is still at about a hundred degrees so there's no chance of uh, condensation on the trays we'll get them out weigh them put them back in give them a couple hours to make sure that they were dry okay and tray one 1038 now yeah see now the ones that were stuck together are no longer iced together you can just lift them apart now okay so everything's looking good on that so and this is a lighter tray of stuff so I'm going to go ahead and leave it up at uh, the top position because the other one has more in it okay tray two so this is the one that was all stuck together last night so get it weighed 1088 yeah now these will come apart quite easily yeah and they're feeling warm all the way in the inside but because they were such tall tall uh, packages of the rotisserie chicken there still could be some cool spots deep inside that I'm just not finding and that's why the dry check by putting it in a couple more hours because I don't want a single icy or, or wet spot in there and so by doing it by weight I'm essentially checking every single spot on all the trays so that'll go back in I'll put that back in in the same spot and get tray three We've got 1014. Yeah, th these are all feeling nice and warm now. I'm not feeling any cold spots, but there's hundreds of pieces here. There still could be a, an ice spot or a cold spot somewhere among them. I'm not going to take a chance, so I'm going to go ahead and just put it back in for a couple more hours. Let the scale tell me. Okay, I'm going to put it back in the same spot again. And then tray four. Okay, and tray four, 1073. This is the one that was stuck together with ice last night. And I would not be so terribly surprised if there were still a piece of ice in the middle of it. Come on. And there it is. Yep there's still one little piece of ice right in the middle of that giant piece everything else looks good feels good and all of this seems fine so that one spot was still a problem everything else seemed perfectly dry you can't have slices that thick and then stack them up three on the tray it just isn't going to dry in the middle very quickly i mean it will dry you can see uh, last night that was just a big block of ice now it has one little spot left in it so it will work you just have to give it a lot more hours okay 
we'll go back up with this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and switch these two because every piece of this one seemed dry because they came apart more. And this one has the one piece right there that still had a bit of ice. <laughs> I've got the chicken checked. Uh, there was at least one cold spot in there. It's the only one I found. Uh, but you would literally have to check every single piece to make sure that there's none of them. Uh, no other cold spots in there. By weighing them, I am essentially checking every single piece on every tray. So to me, that's the simplest way to make sure. Uh, I've got the drain valve closed. We'll go ahead and give it a couple more hours and then recheck it. The one tray is probably going to need more than that because it's going to drop again this time. Unfortunately, I couldn't get them apart last night to spread them out. Otherwise, they would probably be done now. I guess I should have gotten a knife and, and uh, cut them apart. It's an important lesson. Don't leave them that thick. And if other people give them to you that thick, tell them you got to cut them apart. Going to give it more dry time. I did and I just checked. Continue and it's not an issue. I'm going to give it another 15 so we can come and check it in two hours. Ah. And I'm back. It's just about two and a quarter hours later. Uh, we've just got a few seconds and it's going to stop itself at two and a quarter hours later. So the heaters have been off for 15 minutes already, but it's still nice and toasty. There's still 110 degrees, about 105 degrees is the coolest one. And now it stopped itself. So I didn't even have to use the down arrow that time because the timing was, we could call it good because I was supposed to do it 15 minutes ago. But here now, uh, I'll get them out and weigh them. I'm expecting three of the trays to have no weight loss and I'm expecting one tray to have weight loss, the one that had that frozen piece in there. If the three have no weight loss, we'll go ahead and take them out. If they have any weight loss, we'll leave them in there because the one has to stay anyway. Okay, we get the drain valve open. And starting with tray one. Okay, 1037. So two and a quarter hours, we have perhaps one gram. Okay, let me set that aside. Check tray two. Okay, everything's going back in. So that's 1084. So that one's down by four. That one I'm kind of surprised, but as I said before, uh, just because they feel dry everywhere you check, you can't check everywhere. The scale is checking everywhere at the same time. Uh, otherwise, you know, if you check this piece, well, this one looks like the thickest. If you check that one, well, what about that one that's close to it or that one? Okay, so anyway, they're going back in. I'll go ahead and switch the positions this time. Uh, tray two, I'll put up at the top and tray one will bring down. So and I'd already switched these last time because this is the one that had the uh, I was sure is going to have some loss. So tray three, 1013. So that one's only one but again everything's going back in since two trays have to anyway or the one has to. And this one I'm sure is going to have weight loss. 1070. That one actually surprises me uh, because it's only three grams. Whereas the one that I didn't know had a problem, we'll get those back in there. Gonna go ahead and put that one back up at that spot. And this one down here again. So tray two had the most weight loss at four grams. Tray four had just three grams. I knew tray four was going to have some loss because we found an ice spot in it. So tray two is the surprise tray. When I felt it last time, I was convinced that it was dry. I did not think that one was going to be a problem. I would have taken it out and bagged it if I wasn't checking it this way because I did not feel anything that was even remotely concerning to me. No 
cool, not even a cool spot, let alone a cold spot or a damp spot or anything like that. So it still would have had four grams in it. Um, a teaspoon is five grams. So it was close to a teaspoon of water in there. And again, that's not a huge amount, but would you take that dry thing now and pour that teaspoon of water in the bag? I wouldn't even consider that. So we'll give it another couple hours because now it could be dry. Those two hours might have been enough, but it wasn't dry two hours ago. Uh, that's, that's the whole key to this, is we're not checking really with this to see if it's dry right now. We're checking to see if it was dry two hours ago. And that's about the best I can do with this. I mean, we could check it more frequently, but I want to give it a big enough time so that there, if there is water coming out, the number will be big enough to see it. Uh, with this particular scale, we're only seeing single grams. I could use the other scale, perhaps, the one that has tenths of grams. Uh, the problem with that is that any little uh, air movement on a, a tray the size of these trays will make grams of difference with that sensitive of a scale. So I'd need to do some other method to make sure. So by putting it in for a couple of hours at a time, if it loses no weight that I can measure on the gram scale, I'm convinced that I'm okay. Uh, and if it does lose multiple grams, well, that's significant for that amount of time and on that amount of weight of food. Anyway, we'll get this restarted and give it two more hours and check it again, or two and a quarter, two and a half, something like that. Close the drain valve. I'm using the more dry time button. I did just close the drain valve, press the little clock to jump past it, and then it's saying that it needs to be cooler, and if your uh, vacuum pump is hot, yeah, you need to give it time to cool. Ours is cool because we have a fan blowing on it at all times to keep it cool. Okay, so I'll press that clock again to jump to the cycle. And then I'll add another quarter hour so we get the full two hours. We'll be back in about two hours and check it again. So don't go away, it'll just take a second for you. The Costco rotisserie chicken is down to the last three minutes because once again I'm cutting it close. It will bypass that last two and a half minutes and get the drain open and check it. So, uh, do you use the down arrow? Okay, open the drain valve. Got the scale set. Let's see what we've got now. Starting with tray one. Okay, tray one was 1037. Uh, and it was slightly less. Now it's 1036. Okay, and that will be in low enough if nothing else is worse than that. Tray two, this was the big loser last time, and it lost nothing this time. That's good. Tray three, it had barely changed last time. I'll make sure that it's not touching anything, and it is. So that would be a problem with the weight. Okay. 1013, so no change. That's bouncing from 13 down to 12. So there's some fraction of a gram that it's lost. Let's see if those are low enough so I can get tray four on top of that. Tray four was the one I was most concerned with originally, but it was not the big loser last time. Okay, it's not touching anything on the tray. It's down by one gram, 1069. Uh, and it's the one that had originally some ice in it on this piece here and the piece that was stuck on top of it. Want to give it any more time or want to take it out? So the, the biggest drops were approximately a gram or less than a gram because it's bouncing up and down on the numbers on the scale. So we're going to go ahead and stop it and take it out now and, well, and stop it and bag it now. 
Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it with no defrost. Okay, I'm going to pull the thermometer out from underneath yeah, out of the ice and stick it up here and get the defrost fan in place. And I'll get my little defrost baffle in on the shelf to, and this just helps direct the air in through the top and then it comes out through the bottom just to, it seems to help circulate the, the air through there and defrost better. And I'll wait to turn this on until we move away from it uh, and come back and get the time and the power usage and then we'll go over and get these bagged. Okay, the time for the batch. Two of the trays were done hours ago, but the other two were, were done now. So I'm going to call it the full 40 hours, well, round it to 40 hours and 20 minutes. So that batch of Costco rotisserie chicken pieces and the couple of little pieces of sliced ham stuff took 27.57 kilowatt hours. So we'll reset it and get it set for the next one. All four trays are done. Uh, there's quite a lot of rotisserie chicken here and it's such a great deal, the Costco chicken. And then we've got some sliced pressed ham type stuff a little bit on there. So we'll go ahead and get the weights with the thermometers out so we can get the final uh, net weight of it and then we can get it bagged. Next we'll get the net weights of the chicken now that it's dry. All the trays combined were about 8.8 .8 pounds before it was dry, so almost 4,000 uh, grams. This one is without the thermometer, 1029, and then we'll subtract the tray and paper. That leaves 275 grams of chicken on that tray. We'll get all of those and get the weights on it. Okay, tray two. That leaves 328 grams of chicken now. So this was two and a half pounds, just over two and a half pounds of chicken on this tray. And now it's 328 grams, which is a little less than three quarters of a pound. Tray three. So that was a little over two pounds. And now it's just over a half pound. And finally, tray four. And as I've mentioned before, with most meats, it just kind of absorbs what it needs. So you don't really need to weigh them or to know how much water to put back in. You can just get it wet. It'll soak up what it needs and then you can drain it off. But I still want to know for this purpose how much it lost so I can kind of track that. So when people ask, I can at least have some idea. So the total of all four of them, that's 1,177 grams now, which is approximately 2.6 pounds. So it was 8.8 .8 pounds, now it's 2.6 pounds. People ask about or they're confused about uh, the math of this or the tracking of this. None of this is necessary or required. If you just want to bag it, the only one that I would suggest that I would not skip personally is the weight check. And you can do that on a post-it note. Take them out when it says it's done, weigh each tray and, and write it down, put them back in, let it go for another couple of hours, take them back out and weigh them and compare that weight. You don't really care what the weight is. You just want to know, did it lose weight? If it didn't lose weight, then it's dry. If it did lose weight, it's not dry. So we've got all those. Now we can get ready to bag it and figure out what portions are bagging it in. Before people ask to see all this tracking information, this is what we used to do. We just used to write, here's tray one, this is what it weighed before and after uh, the weight checks, and here's tray two. We didn't really care about it, we didn't keep it. Once we filled this up, we just throw it away. Because it has no use, has no value, we just want to know, has it stopped losing weight? If it stopped losing weight, it's dry. If it didn't stop losing weight, it's not dry and we're going to put it in for more time. Uh, but as far as knowing those numbers or tracking those numbers, it doesn't really matter and you don't really need it. This part where it has the dry check has absolutely no value to anyone, even us, except for it tells us how much it lost during that time. The other parts of it are just the tear weight. What did the, the empty tray with the piece of paper on it weigh, and then what was the total gross weight of it 
before we started. And then we subtract it and know how much food was on each tray. And then we do, do the same thing again at the end. The total weight and then the weight of just the food by subtracting out that tear weight again. But the dry check weight doesn't matter and we don't use it for anything else. And half of this data I only track, no, all, almost all of this data I only track now and keep track of it because viewers asked. Uh, and it, I do find it interesting and now that I've started it's basically impossible for me to stop because that's the kind of person I am. So thanks a lot for getting me hooked on that. Okay, now, bagging. What are you going to bag them in? Pints? My quarts? Heart. Ooh, I like. You want to start with that tray? Yeah. The okay. Ham, couple of pieces oh, per and one of the beauties bit. is now that they're dried, now we can snack them. Dry chicken, freeze dried chicken is Not difficult good. to eat because it's so dry. It's the driest thing in the world. Uh, ham pieces and some of the other pieces of meats and things are great dry. Uh, spam is really good dry, uh, but chicken is like too dry to really eat without getting it wet first. So we've got pint bags and quart bags. Wow, when you look at it like that, quart looks like a lot of chicken. Well, this would fit easily. Uh, okay. You could probably sure. get... Closing it. Yeah, well you could get, if you want to put them all in one, you might need a quart. If you want to split it into two, yeah. then pints would be not a problem. Because the way that the gusseted piece, you get that whole height. Yeah, I don't think it'd be a problem at all. Okay. Oh, and I don't have labels for those. So I, I printed some labels for the chicken. So it's got batch number, what it is. Um, and kind of the condition slices and or pieces so you could either leave that or circle one, cross one out, whatever. And then the date that it went into the freeze dryer. And then just a quick note to rehydrate, just get it wet, then drain. Uh, and that's really all you need for rehydrating most meats or most vegetables also. Sometimes it might be nice to know how long to do that with, but these, it, it'll be pretty obvious. It, and some of these are pretty thick. They could take a half hour to get wet in the middle, but depending on what you're going to use them for, you might end up just kind of crumbling this up if you're doing like a shredded uh, chicken dish. And if it's something like chicken noodle soup, you could throw it in there or even cut it in half or cut it into pieces, and then it'll take its own time rehydrating and it'll be no problem. We'll also write the batch number on the bag. Think you'll do some of them in quart or everything in pint? I'll get a pint one to start with. The, the main reason to have a scale for my sister when she's bagging stuff, with, and this is hers, is because she likes to have them fairly even at the end. She doesn't really care how much is in there, just whatever looks right. Uh, but she does like to have them even for the most part, and I can understand that. So now we've got a pint bag labeled. We've got a batch number felt penned onto the bag. That way if this tag does get lost, we can refer back to our notes for what was in batch 571 and we would know what was in there. And so that could be handy if we ever lose a label. They seem to hold on pretty well and I'm too cheap to get stickers because printing these on the laser, really cheap. So if I use this, I can kind of get a visual before I pour it in there. Okay, that would probably fit in one of these bags. And that's a, that's a decent bag. amount of, yeah. of chicken. So I'm going to check that to see if this will fit in this pint bag. It might be too much nope. to close well. Give it a little bit of a shake. And that would close quite well. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Got to do a little math. The chicken, it works out to about 66 grams uh, of the dry chicken is equivalent to about a half pound when it was still wet. So this one has a little bit more than that. And so with the bag and, and the label and everything, it works out to about 80 to 83 grams. So that's the number we're shooting for is about 80 grams per bag. And that will be the equivalent of about a half pound per bag. 
try to get what looks like the, about that amount and then we can add and subtract as required okay so again about a half pound per bag half pound of before is uh, freeze-dried weight now only about 66 grams okay so we'll get those all done and then move on to oxygen absorbers heat sealing and finally putting a gross weight on the bag so we can tell if it ever has a problem and fails and starts letting in moisture okay so another half pound in a bag well that makes sense so we did the math right too since we started with three half pound pieces on there and ended up with three half pound bags so i must have done the math right uh, on the before and after weights Everything's bagged into pint Mylar bags. These are the seven mil Mylar bags. I don't know if I can show this without tipping it out with the gusseted bottoms. I'm real happy with these little pint bags. We've been using these more and more and you can see you could easily get a half pound in there, which um, if this is one of the ingredients of something you make, that's a good amount. If it's your whole meal, maybe you want to use the quart bag or fill it up more. Next, we're going to add 300 cc oxygen absorbers to these, and we could use the 100 cc for these, but we only have the 300 right now, so we're using the 300 in these. So I wanted to show this little sensor. If it's been exposed to oxygen, it turns kind of a blue color, and I like these new ones. They react fast. So I don't even have to take it out or anything you can see it's already starting to change and this is still stuck tight together but there it goes completely it's just astounding how fast these new ones are okay and then going to tuck them alongside the food to make sure it doesn't end up in the seal or in the zipper and kind of pull it over as I do it so that I don't miss one and sometimes their counts in their bags are off. I think I've had one of them with nine in it, but equally troubling, I've had multiples with 11. And when you're trying to count them out, you have your, your bags out here, you have 10 bags, you put the oxygen absorbers in, and you have one still in your hand, and you think you forgot one, so you have to go back and look at them all. So I don't like either way. I don't like when there's too many. I don't like when there's not enough. Now I'm going to go ahead and see, uh, zipper these shut right away because the oxygen absorber is already trying to do its thing. Uh, and the zipper is no substitute for heat sealing, but it's better than leaving the bag open. So I like to get it zippered right away and pushing out any extra air that I can. There's not a lot of room on the top of these bags, so I'm not going to be pushing out a lot. I am feeling for it and making sure that the zipper is engaged and zippering, because these zippers do seem to do a very good job. Yeehaw! The labels are not required or printing a piece. Uh, everybody else will have seen almost everything we've done has been handwritten on the bags and usually we just don't have that many bags of the same thing so uh, I've been just writing on there. I do like a printed label because it's easier to get additional information on there but most of our thousands and thousands of bags are just felt pen written on them. Well, well we will do more and more of this now that I've got uh, figured out how to do it easily. So next heat seal. These pint ones seem to do a real nice job with a nice smooth seal, but if you've got them very, very full, 
then they tend to be wavy along that edge. And if it's wavy, you need to really make sure that you smooth it out along the, the, the seal bar area to make sure that it doesn't have any wrinkles. And I'm going to do it twice real quick to make sure that it's all the way up to temperature. And it's probably completely unnecessary, but it's what I do. Okay, now I've got a good seal across the top, high up on, this, uh, on the bag, so there's still room for a couple more tries in case that one has a wrinkle or, or I cut it off to use part of it and want to reseal it. And we've actually done that a couple of times. Okay, as soon as those are all sealed, we'll also put each one of them on the scale and check to see what the gross weight is of the bag and everything in it, the way it sits. Then we'll write that on it. And if it ever fails, we'll know because we'll be able to put that on a scale and it'll start to weigh more. And if it's bouncing between two numbers like that, we'll pick the higher number because it's right on the verge of that weight. Okay, that's it for those. We'll just keep heat sealing them. So to go with the video of my sister's Costco rotisserie chicken, I decided to pull a bag of my Costco rotisserie chicken out. I have 58 more bags still from 2017. So I have 58 bags that are approximately five years old, give or take a couple of months. It's in 4B, which means it's in 4 back. This is the bag I'm looking for. It's from August of 2017. It was from batch number nine of mine. One of our last remaining 58 bags from 2017 here. This was from batch nine. We'll cut this open and get ready to make probably some sandwiches because it says that it's four slices and it feels like pretty good pieces. So here we go. And then 